There we go. So thank you so much for joining and thank you for that little intro there, Kimberly. So this is all about owning your narrative and in particular, how you can maximise LinkedIn for your personal brand and beyond. So for a little bit of context about me, hi everyone, I'm Em. I see a couple of people that I recognise, which is super nice, um, but I'm a tech creative, a community builder and recently founded Made Good, Good Club, which is my digital consultancy, um, helping impact-led startups and individuals with telling their stories and reaching their ideal audiences. So LinkedIn, like Kimberly said, is a really, it can be a bit of a sticky area because I feel like it's evolved a lot over the years in terms of the way people use the platform now. And in the last year, really, I became very active on LinkedIn um, I'd always been active on it in the past at university, but I think it was kind of purely for networking and my career back then was totally different. I wanted to be a corporate lawyer, which is a very different vibe to being in tech now. Um, so I've had a very squiggly career. I went from studying politics at university to working in a secondary school during the pandemic to pivoting into tech last year. And really in the last two years, one theme has been the kind of defining golden thread core to the way that I've kind of gone about my career and personal development, and that is intentionality. And for me, intentionality is all about stepping into power, recognizing your value, and fundamentally letting go of self-limiting beliefs that hold you back. Because I think, you know, ultimately we are autonomous beings, we're in control of what we want to be doing, and I think LinkedIn is a great way for newbies and seasoned professionals to step out into the platform and go after the opportunities that you're wanting. Because I've had lots of great opportunities through LinkedIn that have helped me massively. Um, and I want to help people now with being able to leverage the platform for themselves and get the opportunities that they are wanting, whether that's career or personal development wise. So to start with, I want to have a little bit of an icebreaker. Bear in mind, I can't actually see the chat. So hopefully Kimberly can like shout out what the numbers are for people. Um, but on a scale of one to five, what's your current experience with LinkedIn? So I put three numbers here. So one is that you have an account, but you don't actively use it. Three being that you're engaging with people, but you're maybe not regularly posting. And five is that you're posting frequently. So maybe more than once a week and you feel comfortable there. So I'll give you a second just to kind of put down um, what your numbers are for that and have a little look at what people are coming out with. Okay, so the numbers are looking good, but only in, the, in that couple of weeks. I can see the chat as well, which is great. So I've got a nice little mixture there. So people that are kind of maybe at the beginning of that journey perhaps and others who feel more confident. amazing okay so we can see there's a real mix there which i think really shows the fact that on linkedin there are so many different personal experiences and i think there's a lot of noise there so i'm really hoping that this session will give you a few useful starting points help you figure out how you can go about that journey and really just give you the confidence to take that first step if you haven't taken that first step yet or give you clarity or affirm what you're already doing if you are on that journey so far so another little activity, um, we don't need to take five minutes on this. I might do it for three minutes, but just picking maybe one or two questions. Um, I want you to just consider how LinkedIn is making you feel at the moment. And this doesn't have to be a super um, psychological activity, but it's just like, do you feel confident on there? Do you feel like you know how to navigate the platform? Um, how is that? How does it sit with you at the moment? Do you feel like you're getting what you need from it? Do you feel like you're connected to the right people? Like I said, I wanted to be a corporate lawyer at the beginning of my journey. Um, so now I've got, you know, a thousand connections all in corporate law, which isn't super relevant to me um, in the immediate sense. What is your LinkedIn vision? Like I'm big on vision boarding, which I know isn't for everyone, but for me, having that vision and having that um, defined path of what you're wanting to achieve is really helpful, especially if you're going after jobs um and moving into tech as you all are and the last two ones are what are your current blockers so what are the things that you think are really stopping you from getting to that next level whatever that might be 
And lastly, are you seeing the content that you find most inspiring? Because I think as well as using LinkedIn for networking, it's a social media platform as well in many ways. Like you can see the different people um, that are posting different pieces of content that might be relevant to you. And, and sometimes you might feel like you're having a really great week of seeing super inspiring content. And other weeks you might think, what, what am I seeing? Like, I don't know why I'm getting all of this um, content on there. So I'll put a little time on for three minutes to just give you a chance to consider one or two of those questions and then we'll circle back afterwards. Um, and what I will do is respond to some of the comments that are in there. So someone has put current blockers. I've just finished a boot camp, so what I post won't have value for others. And I'm really glad that you've said this. Not glad that you feel that way, but um, one thing that I will talk about in this is that we all add value, whether you're at the start of your journey or whether you are an industry professional with ten years' experience. You add value, and there are always going to be people that are at the beginning of their journey, people that are ahead in their journey and people that aren't even on that journey yet. And that's one thing that someone said to me, which really stuck because I had that exact same thought of, well, I've just started my career in tech. Like why would people want to, you know, listen to me? Um, but then I remembered there are going to be people that haven't even started their tech journey who might need that confidence boost um and so seeing someone who's already on that path can be really um inspiring and help those people and also people that are ahead in their careers might be really interested and motivated by the fact that there are individuals that are you know career changing because it's a really bold move to make so you definitely add value um and thank you for making that point i can see other points in there as well um it makes you feel intimidated I understand that people exaggerate a lot there, but seems I'm a teeny fish in a massive ocean and can easily disappear in a wave, which is a really gorgeous analogy. And again, a very relatable emotion and feeling to have. Um, I think LinkedIn is definitely a space that can feel like you've got people that are there giving you hacks on how to make 10,000 K in a month, um, how to start your own business from scratch. Um, people that are sharing really like major stories but again I think it all comes down to how you define your idea of success and how you define the content that you want to create on the platform which we'll talk about later on um so I've got the last 50 seconds to go so I'll just see if there's anything else that I can pick up on now And then comparison, which, yeah, someone so someone said that you only use it when you're looking for jobs. So when you go on there, you end up comparing yourself to everyone's achievements. And I feel bad about where I'm at. And again, it's really tricky because as a platform, it can be very, very easy to fall into that, fall into the pit of comparison. Um, and I think this is why I always say determine what success looks like to you, because ultimately someone else might be achieving something that you want to be achieving and instead of putting yourself in a position oh putting yourself in a position where perhaps you're feeling um comparative think about um the ways in which you can emulate um what they have so for example if they've got certain experiences that you want how could you go about getting those experiences for yourself um i'll dive into some of these topics in a little bit more detail as we go on and I'm happy to signpost to resources afterwards but thank you so much for sharing those different points it's really interesting to see um, where you're currently at so this kind of goes that back onto what I was saying before which is about how you define what you're wanting to create and so this is a question that I just want you to kind of keep in your mind and maybe think about after this session and as you go on your LinkedIn journey, what do I actually want to achieve on LinkedIn? So whether that's going for a job, whether that's you want to share your um, tech career changer story, um, whether you want to give career tips to people or, you know, coding tips, whatever that is, just think about what it is exactly that you want to achieve on LinkedIn. And so these are some of the reasons why you might use LinkedIn. So for example, we've got creative inspiration. So if you're following different people on there that can 
help you with your personal development, give you tips that maybe you might um, not otherwise get. You can use it for career development, mentorship. I've had mentors through LinkedIn, which is amazing. Obviously, networking is a networking platform, community building, connecting with different people, discovering events as well, personal development. They've got loads of LinkedIn courses on there, promoting your business if that's something that you want to go into, and also developing your writing. Um, I think LinkedIn is a great space for developing your written communication, um, especially at the start of your journey. And I think it can be a really great place to sort of build that self-confidence in sharing your story in a safe environment and so my point is here that LinkedIn isn't just networking there are lots of different ways in which you can utilize the platform for different things um, to help you with your career journeys and so I want to talk about some of my LinkedIn wins and some of the LinkedIn wins that you could also have um, by focusing on what's in it for you so for example I did my first keynote address earlier this year in February that came from one LinkedIn connection um who then introduced me to the conference I went with her to the conference the year before that and because I knew about the conference then I applied to be a speaker at the conference and got accepted so from one tiny interaction with one person I ended up doing my first keynote address in front of 500 people which is kind of wild but it just goes to show you how those things can spiral um I've had podcasting opportunities on there as well Ooh. Sorry, I've gone back so I was looking at the chat. Um, podcasting opportunities through the platform as well. Again, through connecting with people. Um, the obvious one, which is strengthening and making connections. So you might have, you know, connections from university, from previous careers. It, it can be really great to nurture those connections again. And I've been doing a lot of that recently. Um, partnered at tech conferences through my community that I founded. And now more recently with me starting my own business, I've been getting freelancing contracts and, and getting to know different people through the platform. And so here's some things that you can consider for yourselves. So connecting to people outside of your network, career and personal development, creating a space for self-expression. So the point that I made before about writing on LinkedIn and it being a great space for that, I think it's, it's really good for um, being able to put your voice out there and write about topics that will be very relatable to a lot of different people building a community that can support with your career and ultimately being able to self-advocate for the opportunities that you want. So I'm very much an advocate for like, if you don't put it out there, if you don't ask, you won't get, which is kind of a very simple principle, but I think it's very true. People won't know what you want unless you tell them. Um, and, and most people are, are more willing than you think to help you, which is what I found. Like just sending that first message, being vulnerable, putting yourself out there and asking for a little bit of advice people will get back to you um so definitely consider the ways in which you can you know do that for yourself so let's go into a little bit of the setup for it so I wanted to just take you back to my LinkedIn journey at the start and being brutally honest like we're in a safe space here I will not be offended how would you rate this profile from first glance if you saw it so like you can either put like a, a number out of 10 or out of yeah we'll go for out of 10 um or if you don't want to go for like the numbers maybe just say like what you think looks good about it or what could be improved and then I'll kind of go through um some of my own thoughts and then show you how that profile has evolved and this activity really is is more so to help you think about the ways in which your own profile can be elevated because it's kind of like when you go into a Waterstones or a bookstore and you see the book cover for the first time like We'll all have books that we are immediately drawn to because of the typography or because of the design. Um, so I'll just give you a second to think about what is good and what is maybe um, less good about the current profile. Thank you, Marion, about the colour. Really interesting points in here so far. Definitely some repetition and hidden text. Um, and yeah, the niche point as well is, is really useful to make. 
yes there is a lot of information there I was looking back at this again and I was like oh gosh yeah it was a uh, I was definitely feeling a little bit um overwhelmed myself amazing well thank you for those points so I've just highlighted some different areas of the profile with my little pixel emoji. So first off, one of the points that was made was about the text being hidden. And again, it's something I hadn't even considered, to be honest. I just made this banner on Canva, which is a great site to use if you're wanting to create free graphics for your LinkedIn. And yeah I hadn't thought about it and again the, the text here is very confusing I don't know if you can see the clicker but yeah where it's got founder software dev content creator it's kind of like a lot is going on there um and it's just quite busy but I do like the colors I think it is if I do say so myself it is kind of um it's a nice color palette um second thing is something that someone had told me when I'd had an audit on my profile was about profile picture so for example the fact that it's not quite centered there's also like a shadow covering half of my face and again it was the classic like I don't have enough nice photos of me to pick one so I kind of went with this and like cropped out the background um and and here again which is a point that someone else had made about the fact that there's a lot going on here again with the headline um so again we've got content creator stars of enthusiast politics grad software developer um, I think to niche or not to niche is like definitely a question that people have. Um, I think it's good to have a niche, but at the same time, it's also totally fine to kind of have multiple topics that you're interested in. But I think having some level of clarity is always useful, especially if you're trying to um, go for job opportunities or go for, let's say, speaking gigs or um, trying to build your own business. Having a sense of like, a clear structure that people can understand when they see your profile is is really important and then again here I don't know how many of you are utilizing the um the link on your LinkedIn page so where I've got github account um again just consider like whether that is is clear enough to someone that's going on the page if a, a job um if a employer is going on your page and they see that link you know think about the ways in which you can adapt it to make it as easy as possible for them if they're seeing your profile or for example recruiters that are going on your profile as well um i know there are a lot of recruits on linkedin especially in tech so just think about the ways in which you can make it as clear as possible um and then also you can add different hashtags as well if that's something that you do or don't do already um it can be quite useful to kind of show again the kind of topics that you will be talking about and so this is what my profile looks like now. It is by no means perfect. I'm still on my own journey. And I always say that when I um, deliver talks about LinkedIn or speak to people about it as well. But I think it is a lot clearer about what I'm doing now. Um, and it feels like the flow is, again, it just feels like it flows better. The photo is clearer of me. It's more centered. The um, banner kind of goes through what I'm doing um, and the headline that I've got here as well is kind of a lot more linked together. It feels a, a bit less sporadic than it was before. So I hope that helps in terms of, you know, understanding a little bit about the logistics of your profile page there. I want to move on to the about section because, again, it can feel a little bit of like a, how much detail do I go into? How much do I want to put in there? I've seen people that have had like one line, literally just being like, I'm a software developer at this company. Um, other people that have a really big about page. Do you want to talk about yourself in first person, in, you know, third person? I go for first person. Um, and for me, I just like it to be really, um, I like it to be really, what's the word? Engaging. I want it to show my personality off. Like, I don't want it to be, super super corporate that's not my energy so I don't go with that um and I feel like I've got a good hook uh, to start with so I think starting with a, a strong hook can really help engage an audience or engage recruiters employers um and really it's just about engaging them you want them to kind of see that that first line and think oh I'm intrigued in learning more about you so if you're from a tech um career change background for example like I don't know what backgrounds that you come from and if you want to say um what you've come from feel free to put that in the chat but for example with me going from politics that was always something that people were like super shocked about like oh wow what a pivot um so if you've got any subjects that you've gone from um I know that a lot of people in education go into tech 
if there's anything like that's unusual there or just talking about your career changer journey um that will be really interesting to to see from um from your side and i think really the ultimate thing is telling a story that is genuine and compelling we're no longer in this age of, of of things being super polished and i want to quickly circle back to the point that someone made about um about what value can i add at the be beginning of my journey and i think that now more than ever people are wanting to see the personal side of that people are interested in understanding how you've gone on that journey so don't shy away from being authentic don't shy away from being genuine telling your story um as vulnerably as you want to you know there's no right or wrong way of doing that but just putting that out there people really enjoy stories and make it clear as well if you're open to network and build new connections which i think is really important so whether that's just like a line in there being like i'm open to virtual coffees or um in-person chats something like that can be really nice especially if there are other people that are similar to you out there that want, might want to connect with you when i put in my profile about you know being open to having a virtual coffee with people i would get like different people reaching out to me or if i said that i was open to have a chat people would often like message me about like my career journey which can be really nice then to build those connections up next i want to talk about the featured section I don't know how many of you are using the featured section, but this is a really good way to basically put out the best content that you've got or put out the things that you're most proud of. Um, so for me, I put about my um, keynote address that was on that's in my featured and also a post that I put out that randomly got quite a lot of um, engagement about, you know, my career journey as well and I think this is really good for giving a visual snapshots into your achievements and it can just kind of allow you to curate, curate um, your profile and the bits that you're most proud of and next I want to talk about analytics which again I don't know how many of you are into analytics I'm really interested in the data side I'm not great at data but I just find it very interesting um, so we've got the profile views, which is particularly good. Um, if you're looking for work, you can see who's looking at your profile. So that can be really interesting, especially, for example, someone from a company that you're interested in looked at you, you could connect with them. Um, I will make the point that I don't know if this is available to the fullest extent if you don't have LinkedIn Premium, which I do have. And I do think it's worthwhile and you can also get a free trial as well. Um, but yeah, I'm just putting that out there because I'm not too sure. Um, but you can also see your post impressions, which can be great if you're trying to build out your content and build out your personal brand. Search appearances as well, um, seeing where you turn up, which is super useful. Ultimately, I think the analytics just helps you get to the nitty gritty of seeing your content performance, seeing who's viewed your profile, and it's really good for personal branding and when you're looking for work. And the last point that I want to make on this is to have your creator mode on. If you don't have that on already, I definitely recommend it. Uh, it just kind of helps like boost your profile. Um, and it's definitely something to do if you haven't done already. So as I said before, the one core theme for me was intentionality. And I think that identifying the why of what you're doing is so important. So this comes down to what are your values? What are you trying to achieve? Um, and you might have heard the phrase, your network is your net worth. I'm not always a fan of like those, um, I, I realise that I've made a typo as well, but those sort of like cringe statements. Um, but I think it's really true. You know, it's, it's really important to consider who's in your network, who is your ideal connection? What opportunities are you wanting to get? And what are your knowledge gaps? And I think that another tip that goes with networking and making those connections, especially if you're someone that can feel a bit awkward or intimidated about knowing how to reach out to people, um, whenever you go to make a connection with someone, there'll be an option to send a note. Now, I don't know how many of you do that. I'll be honest, I will send out like 20 connection requests across a week and I won't ever send a note, but... 
I am going to start doing it now because I put this tip in because I used to do it more often and I think it's a really um, good way to give context to a connection request and to just help people understand what it is that you're kind of wanting from that connection which is really important because otherwise it can sometimes seem a bit random with who you're connecting with and so moving on I'll be going into setting up a realistic action plan and so I want to consider some blockers that you might have so we've spoken a little bit about them at the beginning um, but I want you to think about what's stopping you and I put it smells like the fear of being seen and I think that's a really big thing that a lot of people have to overcome is that fear of being seen of putting yourself out there of people um, kind of knowing about your vulnerabilities, knowing about your journey, it can be a little bit daunting, to be honest. But I just want to say, remember the compound effect. Small and consistent actions over time are going to compound. So it's not about, you know, saying, OK, well, I'm going to post now on LinkedIn every single day for like a month. That might seem, you know, really far out and um, an unrealistic expectation for you at the moment. But just consider you know, how you can take small actions consistently to build that profile, to leverage opportunities, and ultimately get clear on your goals and how you define success, which is something, again, that I keep hammering on about because it's really important to, to think about what it is exactly that you are wanting. And I think that's a good sort of journal prompt if you're into journaling to just think about um, what your goals are and consider breaking it down even further than that of how your actions on a daily, weekly, monthly basis can help move the needle towards those goals. My friend said this to me when we had a chat and I loved it. So I was like, I've got to use this for this presentation. Other people's opinions are paying the bills. So I just want to, again, ask the question, how many of you have had first-hand embarrassment because of what someone said to you? Like, I... Um, I used to get really awkward at my previous job role because I would post on LinkedIn and sometimes people would like make a comment about it to me um and it was never like a malicious comment but it was kind of enough to make me feel really awkward about the fact that people in my company were seeing what I was posting um and and it just made me feel really awkward but I just remember like at the end of the day no one else's opinion matters apart from your own which again is very you know, simple statement, but it's true. Um, so just remember that when you're going about your goals and and moving forward with your career development, to always focus on on how it's making you feel and if it's something that you're enjoying doing and then kind of blocking out the noise and ultimately embracing the cringe because, you know, it's not easy to put yourself out there, whether you're writing content, filming content, it's, it's never an easy thing. It takes that first step to just kind of get over that initial hurdle of being like, okay, I'm out there, hello world. Um, but there comes a point where you just have to embrace it because at the end of the day, the people that have the most success that have kind of um, really been able to sort of forge um, long lasting careers for themselves are also the people that have kind of been ruthless about the opportunities that they've wanted have really embraced the process of kind of throwing themselves into the ring multiple times um being rejected and and still kind of getting back up again and, and going through it so if nothing else remember to embrace the cringe and i want to say that you decide the narrative and you have the autonomy so it, it's essentially the fact that if you tell yourself that you know you have value to add if you said that to yourself every single day you would believe that you have value to add if you said that you you don't have value to add that you're just at the start of your career why would someone want to listen to me um you know I've, I've just kind of moved into tech I don't think that I can add any you know interesting insights into that then you're always going to be yourself in in that position which obviously um, this isn't to diminish anyone's feelings about themselves but it's just to kind of encourage a shift in mindset which I think could be really important and remembering that you, you know you're empowered and you decide how to show up online and and that's your journey alone and no one else's and so I wanted to talk about content pillars I know that someone had spoken initially at the beginning about niches and I think content pillars can be really good for this so 
Content pillars basically are around three to five topics that you'll consistently discuss, amplify and create content for on social media. So for example, when I was starting my tech um, career, I would often talk about that career changing journey. Um, I would talk about like self-confidence. I'd talk about personal development. Now, for example, they've shifted slightly. So it's kind of more about building a business, still talking about kind of self-confidence, intentionality and personal development. But it basically can really help you defining um, what it is that you want to talk about. So what you want to be known for, which is ultimately what personal branding is all about. It's about when people see your profile, what are they going to think about you? What are they going to to know about you when they have a scroll through? Um, So, for example, if you're a career changer, that can be a really good one to talk about because you're going you there's no one better equipped to talk about that experience than you and you could do kind of a weekly reflection on your career journey or your top learnings or what you would tell people that are considering getting into tech um and that can be so beneficial for loads of different people that are out there considering their journeys and I don't know how many of you have heard of Simon Sinek I um kind of obsessed with his podcast um, and his whole premise which is about the why so the value and understanding those core values and this is a quote of his that says people don't buy what you do they buy why you do it and the the point is that a lot of people know how they're going to do things um, but they don't know the why like what's the reason behind it and I keep going back to this point because I think it's really important because not only do I think that it helps you gain clarity but I feel like it also just keeps you true to yourself and if you can have that mental checker of like I know why I'm building my personal brand it's because of of the fact that I want to help other people on their journeys for example then that can be so useful um in in keeping you on the track and also motivated to continue on that journey and The next point is all about your tone of voice, because I think this is another area that people can get a little bit confused on when it comes to how you present yourself. Um, And for example, for me, I'm very transparent and very open on the platform. Um, I kind of strike the balance between conversational and professional. And I just want to say to anyone who's not too sure, I think think about what feels natural to you if you want it to be more formal you can make it more formal if you want it to be more conversational friendly make it more conversational friendly I think don't overthink it too much write in a way that feels natural to you and also my tip for this is to basically identify accounts that you resonate with and use them for inspiration so for example if there are people on LinkedIn that you are like particularly motivated by particularly inspired by think about what it is and you know what is about their content and their style that draws you in and think about the ways in which you can adopt that or um you know use that to help you with your own linkedin page as well and this kind of brings me to the point of you know you are able to decide how much you want to share so for example like i've shared quite a lot about my career journey and been very like honest and raw sometimes to a fault um, but I think ultimately you get to decide where those boundaries lie and like you can be very open on the platform but still have certain boundaries that you won't cross onto and I think understanding that is really important. And as I move to the kind of last couple of points I just wanted to bring your attention on an elevator pitch which I think is really useful for networking events in person when you're networking online and you've probably all heard about it and you possibly may all have an elevator pitch um but I think it's really useful in in introducing yourself to people and being really clear on what it is that you're doing and what you're wanting and essentially I think that the basis of this elevator pitch can remain the same but it's important to adapt it depending on the context And so essentially, if you're doing this in person, it's basically 30 to 60 seconds of an introduction um, to someone that you're meeting where you're introducing yourself and your career journey and what it is that you're wanting to achieve. Um, So in this case, it might be getting a certain job and why you would be the best fit for that based on your experiences. So the kind of six points to the elevator pitch are identifying what your goal is, 
Um, so for example, like going for that career change, going for that job, knowing your audience as well, and starting with a hook to basically keep them engaged with what you're saying, describing what you do, highlighting your uniqueness. So for example, if you're coming from the career changer journey, um, you know, what is unique about your journey is the fact that you've come from a different background, you've made that conscious choice to move into tech, which is really inspiring. And then including a call to action, which is basically where they'll be able to get in contact with you or um, it just gives them a way to engage with you afterwards to kind of keep that conversation flowing. And I think with elevated pictures, it's kind of, you want it to be polished, but you don't want it to be over polished. So I'd say like to keep practicing this and refine it until it feels natural to you. And you just want it to feel like conversational. You want it to feel clear, but you don't want it to feel like something that feels really unnatural or so, so polished that it kind of doesn't feel like it's you saying it anymore. So this is just an example one for a job seeker. Um, so you can see that they've kind of really highlighted the fact that they've got X amount of experience and including the percentages here of, of how they've um, made an impact, what their passions are, and also what they're looking for at the moment. So new opportunities um, in the tech industry. And then at the end, they've got the call to action, which is can we schedule a time to discuss how I can contribute to your team? So you can think about the ways in which you would adapt that for your positioning from you know being a career changer and looking for that first role. I'll also be sending the PowerPoint out, so um, it will give you plenty of time to ruminate over the different slides. So here are some tips for pitching and networking. So we've got some do's and some don'ts. So do find common ground. So whether that's someone, for example, that's gone to the same university as you that you're connecting with, um, whether they've got a hobby that they're interested in that's the same as yours. Finding common ground is really useful because what it does is it breaks the ice and breaks the barrier, which is so important and useful when you're networking. Adapt it depending on the audience. So for example, if I was talking to a senior, I might go in with a different positioning. If I was talking to someone who's at the same level as me, I'd go for a different positioning. Just know how to adapt it. And I will say this, people love to be complimented. And I'm not saying to do this in like a slimy way, but I am saying that like, if you're reaching out to someone and asking for advice, it's really important and useful to kind of say what it is that, you know, brought you to them in the first place. And often that can just involve saying, you know, I'm really inspired by your journey. I love what you're doing in this industry. Like just find the ways that you can kind of soften it as well. So it doesn't just seem like you're saying, I would like this from you and you know can you give it to me by the end of next week um and the last point is asking for a warm intro to someone so warm intros are great and if you don't know what a warm intro is it's basically where for example if someone said to me um you know um I've seen that you're connected to this person can you introduce me to them that would be a warm intro because it's kind of like it's still they're still new to each other but they've got one mutual connection which is me I think this is so important because what it does again is it kind of similar to the common ground point it, it brings in a person who knows you both so it again takes away that kind of intimidation sometimes um and then moving on to the don'ts which is a bit of a, an intense gif of Lisa um don't only speak about work so I know this is kind of like oh but if I'm going to a networking event if I'm talking to people obviously I want to speak about work you can of course speak about work but I think it's really important and useful to kind of have a question at the beginning that isn't just about kind of what you do so for example what hobbies are you interested in what I don't know what brings you um fulfillment outside of work um where's the best place that you've been to on holiday recently things like that again just to kind of soften it and don't just hard sell or pitch yourself so don't kind of go in with like an immediate sort of like this is what I'm wanting and making it really kind of um impersonal and kind of cold which links to the next point which is about don't make it a one-way exchange so Oftentimes with networking, you know, you can have a conversation with someone where it's kind of, it can feel a little bit give take. Um, I think just figure out ways in which you can also add back to that person as well. And lastly, don't go in without a plan. So 
if you're messaging someone on LinkedIn and you think about that, that's your like one shot at kind of building that connection, let's say. Make sure that you're very clear on what it is that you're wanting from that connection while you're reaching out to them um, and the kind of specifics of why you feel like that connection is going to be beneficial. And especially if this is something where you're wanting like mentorship or you're wanting to have like a virtual coffee with someone, making it really clear rather than it just being like, a, hey, I'm so glad that we connected. Um, full stop end of conversation is really important so I hope that is useful on that front and as we draw to the end of my kind of presentation part um, since we're talking about posts and LinkedIn and networking and putting yourself out there I've got this take-home challenge and I put will you accept it you don't have to but I'm just putting it out there um, if you're wanting to get yourself back out there on LinkedIn um, I used to do and what I still really enjoy doing because I'm struggling for content is if I've gone to an event I will often just write about that event and that can be a really great way to kind of engage with the people that have been at the event so it's kind of a two-way process I get to write about the event and I also get to connect with people that might have gone to the event as well um, so if you are feeling so inclined you could write a post about this online event what your top learnings are from it and what the steps you would take moving forward would be and so as we draw to a close I would like to say thank you so much again for listening to me talk and do we have any questions I think Kimberly will be able to read them out and thank it would be so great to, to know them thank you so much as you were going along I was like looking at my own profile going okay like <laughs> how does my banner image look like my photo <laughs> um yeah it's always um I couldn't work out how to put creator mode on though oh okay I can help you with that that's if you want <laughs> yeah I, I, I then wasn't sure whether it was like a paid feature or not um so I was like oh how do I how do I do that? I don't know if anyone else is also interested in how I'll they do something. There are, and there are a few questions which we will definitely get to in a, in a second. Um, yeah, so I can see it says like add profile section, like the add about and education and stuff. And cause there's like these three bits like core, mm -hmm. add featured. Is that? Oh, add a post is featured. Oh, that's quite cool. I love <laughs> I'm just like <laughs> you're having all these learnings I'm doing this um, with everyone else oh, I'll add that feature okay so da -da -da, let me see do you have a social media plan to ensure that there is regular engagement um oh. I would <laughs> I would no, 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 I go on. have I would say that I don't have a social media, I don't have a really intensive social media plan, but I do have a notion paid where I um, sort of monitor my content. I used to be a lot more like vigilant about this um, since starting my business and kind of just honestly just trying to get into the grind of like um, getting the business up and running. I've been a bit less organized on that front. Um, but I do have like my content pillars. I have my notes page as well. Like honestly, if I could show you my phone and like go on my notes and like the chaos that is like me having like a random thought for like a post idea at like 1 a.m. in the morning. Um, I do that a lot as well um, to kind of help me. So in short, yes, I do have a social media plan. Is it the most organized plan in the entire world? Um, no, but there are lots of great places on there to look into um, the kind of plans that you can have. Um, Pretty Little Marketer, um, I will say is a really great place to start if you're looking at that uh, content. Um, and I'm more than happy to connect with you afterwards and like have a conversation around that in a bit more detail. Um, there's a question about what would you do if LinkedIn limits the number of personalized notes? I can only send five a month. I did not know that. Um, can you only send a note with the connection if you've got LinkedIn Premium? That okay, I didn't know that. Um, if you can only send five personalized notes, I would say in that case, um, for the connections that you think you are really wanting, that could be kind of like what I would call the moving the needle connections. Um, make sure that you're using the notes for those ones. So the connections where you're like, I don't want this to be a message that is sent and I don't get a response from, add the context. 
if it's a connection where you're like it, it doesn't necessarily matter either way then I wouldn't say to um to use it in that case and then we've got could you please share your journey on how you began delivering talk and presentations did you initiate by reaching out to connections on professional networking platforms like LinkedIn or did you attend industry events to expand your network alternatively did you commence with offering complimentary talk to community initiatives like Cobars and subsequently progressed to presenting at companies and other organizations okay um it's a bit of a meaty question. I'm going to try and um, break it down into different bits. So essentially for me, with my journey with um, doing talks and presentations, it was kind of a mixture. I set up She Chats Tech, which was the women in tech community that I was running at the time. I'm still running it now, but it's um, a little bit on the back burner. But basically, because I was running that platform, um, that kind of gave me the perfect opportunity to experiment with doing talks. It also gave me the opportunity to go after the connections that I was wanting and the organizations that I kind of wanted to work alongside because I kind of had that behind me. So I think that is one good thing about building a community um, is that it kind of does allow you to kind of get into different spaces because you've got the kind of, um, I don't want to say like the levity behind you, but you've got so, like you've got something there. So I can say like, I'm building this community for women in tech and I would love to do a talk with you on X topic and it kind of allows um, for that to happen more easily but I would say that um, I've also been able to get opportunities through LinkedIn connections like people that have like reached out to me for podcasts and stuff and that wasn't just because of the community that was also because of um, my career change journey I think you just have to get loud on LinkedIn about it um, so I would say like doing an introductory post, like for example, if you're really not sure how you want to put yourself out there on LinkedIn, find a, you know, relatively clear photo of yourself and do like an intro post and be like, hey, like LinkedIn network, um, I'm just kind of putting myself back out there after this amount of time and wanting to share my recent career change journey, my journey with Codebar. And if you like tag Codebar in there as well, like they they will all, that will automatically then be shared to like more people so I think that can be a really good way of kind of boosting your profile and I think it is kind of like a, a two-way process of like you've got to boost your own profile to kind of get your voice out there so that people know what it is that you're trying to do and then that can also allow for opportunities to come in organically but also put yourself out there if there's a, a podcast that you're interested in talking on I've done that recently um where uh, you know someone that I'm connected with has quite a big podcast I am really interested in the topic she talks about it's a finance podcast and I said listen I really want to talk about these topics is this something that could work she said yes I'm going to be filming that in August like don't be afraid to self-advocate and don't be afraid to put yourself out there especially with like different events as well and we're probably um I'd have to like write them down but I'm more than happy to kind of share different communities that I think would be great for like people to um reach out to that are genuinely very helpful when it comes to like getting new people out there on the scene as well like reframe women in tech is an amazing conference um for getting speakers that are new to speaking or haven't spoken in a while out there um so if you want feel free to connect with me and we can have again like a more in-depth conversation on that but I will think about any um, additional resources that I could add on that front and send it to Kimberly and then that can be sent to you all. Um, and then on the talk side in terms of like monetization. Um, so yeah, when I was doing the community, that was all um, complimentary. And for me, it was really important to do it in that way initially, because again, when you're trying to like build out your, um, proposition and like build out your brand and business you kind of you need that experience and you know it's also really important for me to do pro bono work and to do stuff that aligns with me which is why I'm so happy to do this sort of thing um tonight because it's really important I've had loads of people help me and I want to give back I think paying it forward is so important so yeah the next this is a workshop that I'm doing this year that will be paid which is really exciting and I'm still getting used to kind of setting prices and stuff but um, I initially started doing it for free and like now I'm moving towards um, payment 
hopefully that answers those questions um there are there are often like cfp so call for proposals where they will say if they're paid so for example our cobar festival um we we pay all the speakers for that because we we get a sponsor to cover it and so we say at the top you know you'll get paid 150 pound for this talk um there's one in november happening ff conf they say in their cfp as well we pay each speaker 500 pound and then they pay your they cover your travel and accommodation as well so some that you know you can submit to these cfps and then you know they some some of them not all of them the ones that do pay often will say at the top you know here's how much we, we pay mm, that's really useful to know and i think yeah if you like find people on linkedin that are also speakers like just search for people that have like done speaking things in the past um that can be really useful because i often think that sometimes it's a case of like of knowing people that can then tell you that information on like oh this is like like kimberly just said like these are some um organizations that do pay um i think the more you get yourself out there and connect with different people the more you'll gain access to the knowledge of like what opportunities there are out there um and there is another question that says what would be one or two things you think everyone should do to get the most out of LinkedIn um I would say one thing is to really critically look at your profile and really think about like the impression that someone's getting from it so kind of what I did at the beginning with going through my own profile like just consider um the small things that can be improved so for example like your banner your headline your about your photo like the little things that can make a big difference in in kind of showing that you like showing that more professional side versus making it um I don't want to say less professional that seems a bit harsh but like basically the difference between it being more or less polished let's say I think that can be really useful just having a little bit of a quick audit of what can be improved um and then I think also to get the most out of LinkedIn I would say um engaging more with people's content as well like don't underestimate the power if you're not keen on posting on a regular basis don't underestimate the power of um contributing to people's content whether that's writing a, a comment um whether that's sharing and reposting and talking about why you enjoyed the content like that can be really useful and again you can meet like-minded people in those comment threads um, but I will say that if you are commenting on people, because like the LinkedIn algorithm is changing now, I hate that everything is so algorithmic, um, but because it's changed a lot in recent times, don't just go for like your classic, um, you know, really inspiring or that's great, you know, like try and um, write a little bit more in detail about the post, what you enjoyed about it, because the longer the comments um I, there's something to do with like the length of comment and or like how detailed it is and like basically um how it it operates on their system I feel like I'm really poorly explaining that I know what I mean I hope that makes sense but like don't just write like a super short comment basically like try and spend a little bit more time crafting that because the platform is moving towards more authentic connection and and kind of nurturing that over just kind of sending off like hundreds of connection requests and just building a network for building a network's sake. I hope that helps. I don't know if there's any more questions that I can see. I don't know if anyone's put any more in. Um, yeah, please do pop them in the chat if you have any more questions before we wrap up. I've also, I don't, I'm really upset that the QR code isn't there, but hopefully can I stop go off this bit and then show my LinkedIn. Does that show people it? Ooh. There you go. I just popped a link to your profile in the okay, chat. Okay, perfect. So people can connect with you there. Okay, perfect. Yeah, because I just honestly feel free to message me if you want a more detailed conversation. I'm always more than happy to have conversations about LinkedIn especially with people that are also career changing into tech um can't say that I've been the longest career changer um since I kind of moved from software engineering into kind of wanting to do more of a design role but um I'm happy to share any insights that I have and also recommend people to you that might be useful 
um so yeah do connect and reach out and let me know if you do have any questions and i'll also send off resources to kimberly afterwards um that can be put into an email 